Welcome back to another review and today I'm in the exciting new Nissan Qashqai and we're going to take a look around the outside, we're going to take a look around the inside, we're going to see what it's like to drive and then at the end we're going to see what it's like to own, look at some ownership numbers and some figures and then we're going to do the GDR test. We're going to see should you get it, should you just drive it or should you remove it from your list of cars. So stick around because we've got a lot to get through. But to start us off, let's go check out the new design. And what you're looking at here is the Ascenta Plus Nissan Qashqai. So this is the top of the range model. And it's clear to indicate that by its 19 inch rims and the two tone color paint that it comes with. And looking at it from the front, you can see that it's got that all new design, which looks really cool. And going closer in on these headlights, you'll see that you've got the daytime running lights on top and your actual headlights at the bottom. And yep, here's a closer look at the outside from the side having a clear look at that two-tone paint and those awesome looking 19 inch wheels. And the lines are sharp, they're quite distinct, they're prominent, um, and I think they add a lot to the look of this car because it's really, really bold in person. And then coming around the back, you'll see that they've still got those textbook Qashqai rear lights, which are quite cool, so they've carried that through. But something I'm not too fond of is the actual bumper at the bottom because it's quite plain and simple, it's just black. Um, they haven't even added any accents or anything like that, which I think would have been really nice for the Ascenta Plus model um, Just to add some silver or some sort of two-tone color there, which would have been quite cool And then going on to the inside, you'll see that there is actually quite a lot of space But unlike the models you get overseas, we do get a spare wheel So you don't get the versatility of the boot underneath the floor Where you can actually change the shape of it by moving the floor around and making compartments but I think with it coming with the spare wheel is going to be a lot more helpful than getting a couple little more bits of storage than what you could get overseas. Yep, and unfortunately there is no power tailgate, which is quite unusual for a top of the range model here. And then taking a quick peek at the inside, uh, you'll see that it looks completely premium. Um, and that's because this is the Ascenta Plus, so you do get the Nappa leather, um, the full leather interior, the 12.3 inch display, and everything like that so it's a really good cabin to be in the detail is on another level from the stitching to the build quality the use of materials it just exceeds what you would have expected from a cash guy and if you look close at the steering wheel you'll see that you've got all of the steering mounted buttons controlling your audio as well as your cruise control and here you have your dual zone climate control and the 12.3 inch screen that i spoke about yep there's the infamous cvt with your electric park brake as well as your different drive modes and again just looking at the quality and the stitching that comes with this Ascenta Plus model relatively okay size glove box and armrest with a split level so you've got a little spool box up front and if you go a little bit deeper you get a much bigger cavity and then you do have some quick access buttons on top here to quickly get to your cameras if you need to just like this where you can have a full surround view or as you can see here I'm looking at the rear all right before we take it for a drive let's chat about what it's going to cost to live with so I'm going to base it off of this model here which is the Ascenta Plus which goes for 670,000 Rand um, and if you are looking at buying that and looking for a monthly installment and with an 11.5 percent interest rate you're looking at about 11,700 Rand a month and for those who need to put down a residual or balloon payment, I've worked it off at 30% and you should then be paying about 9,700 Rand. And then to fill the tank, you're looking at about 1,400 Rand. That's because it's got a 65 litre tank, which is quite big. And then what's it gonna cost to insure? And now you're looking at about 1,271 Rand a month. And that's with an excess of about 5,000 Rand. But yep, you can do the math and you can see if this is a car that you could live with. But if you want to pay a little bit less, you can then look at some of the entry level models that come in this cash car range, which would be the Vizier. And that's at about 100,000 Rand less from about 570,000 Rand. Okay, so let's see what this car is like to drive. And as previously mentioned, it's powered by a 1.3 litre four cylinder turbo petrol, putting out 110 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque. And it's not slow by any means, but it's definitely not quick. But I think that that might come down to the fact that it's powered by a CVT. Uh, so it's got a continuous variable transmission. But we know Nissan loves CVTs. They're great for fuel economy, but they're not a lot of fun to drive. But at the end of the day, it gets the job done smoothly and quietly. And that's quite unusual for a CVT because they can normally be quite shouty. The brakes. 
and then the results of all of that combined the fuel economy and I'm currently getting nine liters per hundred Ks which is substantially more than the claimed combined 6.1 liters per hundred Ks and yes I have been idling quite a bit and um, testing how the car feels and that sort of thing but I've been doing nothing strange or out of the blue so I should be getting at least in the sevens um, I'll keep working on it but I'm nowhere near that 6.1 big bump thought it was gonna be worse so I've already spent a few days with the car so I've been able to learn where everything is and where all the right settings are and stuff like that um, and I've been able to get the car and the seat into the perfect kind of driving seating position for me um, Along with the steering wheel and everything like that and I must say it's a seriously comfortable car to drive The seat design lends itself to being quite supportive and comfortable at the same time You can definitely spend a lot of time behind the wheel in this car and still be comfortable after a few hours And I've already told you about the interior layout and how everything is set up and things like that, but I think what's different is how you use it when you're driving and I must say that everything is at arm's reach um, your climate control is all right here it's easy to use and easy to kind of get through your audio controls are all set up here too yes you do have the big 12.3 inch display over here but majority of your settings and the stuff that you need at a moment's notice are all down here and easily accessible you aren't having to dig through menu 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 on the screen here like some other cars so yeah that's a definite plus for me and something else I need to commend them on is the drive quality because this car absorbs a lot of the road imperfections and all the bumps that you go over uh, yes you do feel them but there's no jolting in your body and there's no sudden bouncing and things like that the car is very composed at all times and speed humps are kind of bearable I'm going over a speed hump and usually when you go over a speed hump your rear wheels kind of go over the hump and hit the ground and you get a bit of a, a jolt in your back but the suspension setup that they've got here is seriously impressive um, you land so softly you barely feel a lot of the bumps and humps that you go over but that's thanks to this car's brand new independent multi-link suspension doing all the hard work the brakes again and this and haven't been shy with all of the driver assistant systems too driver assistance systems too that's quite a mouthful you've got a plethora of them and it's kind of what you should be expecting from a car at this price point anyway um, so you've got your lane keep assist you've got your adaptive cruise control that keeps you a distance from the car in front of you um, it accelerates for you it brakes for you uh, you've also got your forward collision warning you've got rear cross traffic alert sure there's a whole bunch of stuff and it definitely comes in handy and it's all kind of activated here on your steering wheel when you select your cruise control and again simple layouts that make driving a breeze but it's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows and there are a few things that I wish that this car did have um, and that would include a digital driver's display a panoramic sunroof as well as keyless entry which it doesn't have um, as well as an automatic boot and those are the kind of things you would expect from a car at this price point and it does have massaging seats but I think that's one of those features that I would definitely go without and rather have one of those other ones that I've mentioned now already this car goes for 670 odd thousand rand for this particular unit um, and those features that I've listed will more than likely come in a similarly priced Kia Sportage so that's a bit to think about and you've got these brakes that squeak and this is a new car Okay, so now for the verdict and the GDR test. And no, that doesn't just always stand for Greg Dennis reviews, but in this case, it's should you get the car? Should you just go and drive the car? Or should you remove it from your list of cars? Because there might be just a lot of other better things out there. But in this case, I would definitely tell you to go and drive it. There's a lot of cars out there in this segment. And at this particular price point at 670,000 Rand, you've got a lot of options and you'll probably find that there's cars there that are going to have a lot more spec than what this car has um, as i've mentioned there's no keyless entry there's no panoramic roof um, you do not have the automatic boot and you don't have a digital driver's display and there's other cars out there that have all of that stuff but i'm not going to let all of that take away from this particular car 
um, it drives really well it's seriously comfortable it looks absolutely incredible i think what they've done with the design of this new cash car is absolutely spot on and if this is the look for the rest of the cars in their lineup then i'm excited to see what they've got in store so thanks for watching another great dennis review i hope you enjoyed what i had to say about this only nissan cash car it is a really great car so if you enjoyed this please will you drop a like and if you want to see more videos like this then please consider subscribing so thanks and i'll see you in the next one